So I've noticed a certain profile, like a psychological profile of a person in my own therapy work and my own personal life. And this person that I'm going to be discussing in this video is very adverse to the emotions of other people. And they tend to have a very strong reaction and they tend to even get angry when others try to connect with them or when others try to seek validation from them. This type of person can be your moms or dads, boyfriends, girlfriends, doesn't really matter. But we notice that there's, or what I notice is a specific marked defense that is tricky to kind of see through and that's what this video is about because this marked defense that this person has, they tend to come across as kind of having it together or having some answers and if we're struggling with our own empowerment and our own shame, this can feel really damaging to get shot down by this person. But what I, the video is going to be about, about what I notice, is we tend to think about this person as having it together, but I think they're actually triggered at baseline in a way that they're so averse to emotions that I think that they probably... They, to me, they look like they have some kind of trauma history. It's just not as clear or as blatantly loud as the trauma histories of other people. Here's what I mean. When we go to try to seek validation or care from them or try to share our trauma with them, if we make the mistake of doing that, this type of person reacts with, oh, but that was so many years ago, you gotta get over it. Or lots of human beings get abused. It's called being a human being. You don't see me wallowing in this stuff. They tend to have a very strong marked judgment when other, people's try, when other people try to connect with them emotionally. When you're on the receiving end of that, most likely from your trauma, you may be most likely sh struggling with your own shame of your childhood trauma or otherwise, and you're already struggling with your own truth and empowerment about it. So going to a person like this tends to be pretty damaging or dangerous when it comes to feeling connected and feeling sort of safe. Some qualities about this person that I find tend to sort of line up with the type of, and I don't mean to keep saying this type of person, I just mean, I would just want, want to say this type of trauma survivor. The qualities that this type of trauma survivor has is they tend to be highly reactive to the emotions of others. Specifically, if they perceive that the other person is going into victimization, I find they have a marked response to that. Another quality is, is they, on the surface, they seem like they have it together about their emotions when the reality is, is they're almost anti-emotion. They deal with their feelings from a place of very much repressed, keep a good face going on, um, and don't sort of talk about it and definitely don't talk about it with them. And there's sort of a toughness about it. And the other quality is in relationships, they have, a, they have a marked attitude of like, you should be like me and put this stuff away. So that's some qualities that the person sort of has. Now let's get into what might be some of the reasons why this person struggles with this stuff. And by struggle is like, I find that this person, their relationships may not be very emotionally rich. They may be in a partnership or they may be in a family life that is sort of around sort of uh, toughness is what I find, or it's not a very touchy-feely kind of emotional standpoint. And where I think, where this family system about this person comes from is that this person may have grown up in sort of a very tough environment, if not a toxic masculine environment. But here's the thing that I really find is a potential cause and this, this is what's tricky about this stuff. This person would be the authority on it, but you really can't get that. They're not really interested in therapy. They're not really interested in talking about their childhood. But from what I see is I wonder is if this person grew up with somebody who was overly emotional, who was sort of played a, a little bit of a victimization or the victim card, and they have a strong reaction to that. Let's just say that this person grew up with a very... Uh, emotional alcoholic who would try to get them as a child to get them to validate their feelings and sort of take them hostage um, or that they grew up with a narcissist or someone who was very sort of struggles with a personality disorder and sort of took this person hostage in a way that um, that classic thing about the classic trauma thing about the parents requiring their children to provide emotional support 
So that's one theory that I have going on that the person who exhibits this strong defense is I think that they're triggered and I think that the person seeking emotional connection or validation from them, this type of person projects their original family system onto them. That's just my theory. That's just what sort of what I see or how my brain works around the childhood trauma stuff. And hopefully it will give you guys some insight about why they and you know this is for your insight in a way i think that this person that i'm describing is a very difficult person to be in a relationship with because getting them to feel their emotions is it's the last thing that they want to do and it's the last thing they want to do is be available to your emotions one other um potential sort of theory about where i have this person thinking about what might have happened to them growing up is if they grow up in a family that is extremely anti-emotional or that they just don't talk about emotions, they don't process emotions, they look like someone being emotional is like, oh, they've lost that control, they're not a good person anymore. And there's plenty of toxic family systems that are like that. Or simply that this person had no prior parenting about their own emotions and that the family was really limited emotionally. This person's a really tricky person to be in a relationship, especially when you're trying to seek connection or when you're seeking validation. They tend to get mad at you when you are exhibiting your feelings and they will just sort of have this very superior coaching kind of a thing, just be like me. But the, what I wanted to express to you guys as the point to the video is that we often feel shame about our own triggers or trying to seek connection like that. But we really need to start seeing other people as having their own triggers. And it's not just us in that. Because when you are on the receiving end of someone who sort of says to you, that was so many years ago, you got to get over it. You don't see me like connecting with you about your trauma or, you know, like as if they're playing rules and stuff like that, like special rules is I find that when you're on the receiving end of that and you're struggling with your own shame and your own empowerment, you will feel shot down. You will feel like maybe this person is correct and they have it more together when they don't. They may be just as triggered as you are. And the, the other side of it, sort of like the thinking about another perspective to think about is what is so dangerous for this person about your emotions? What is so, this person has a marked thing that they have going on that they perceive, they have a hot button issue to perceived weakness. That when you come to them, if you wanna to talk to them about pain or trauma or something like that, they view you as weak and they have a zero tolerance policy for weakness. I know that that sounds like they may be a narcissist, but they may not be a narcissist. They may be sort of a childhood trauma survivor themselves, but having no clue about it. Don't coach them about it because this person tends to have, like think they think therapy is for weak people. So try not to get confused about if you get shot down by this person is what is so dangerous about other people's emotions is what is so dangerous about opening our hearts to someone and being present for them. What is so dangerous to this person about having someone who is in emotional distress. I hope that video was helpful to you guys. Just a thought, just something that I wanted to sort of put together. I will see you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, hit the subscribe button, the thumbs up, all that jazz, or hit the bell notification if you want more of these videos. And I will see you next time. Take care.